Hi folks, Steve here and I'm back with another video about painting shields. So this is building on the uh, the last video I did which I'll link in the top there. And so this time this is a fireforge shield, um, it's an undead one, it's a bit damaged but it's got a nice flat surface. So we're going to paint that, building on the kind of techniques from the previous video and uh, do even a little bit of cheeky freehand on it. So let's crack on. So here we are, straight to it, no messing about. We've got the shield primed black and I'm going to give it a, an all over nice thin coat of German camo black brown which is the same brown I used in the last video again any um, you know very dark brown that you have uh, is going to be absolutely fine for this just making sure that it's, it's very nice and thin on my palette because I don't want it to give any kind of texture as it dries and we're just going to go over the whole thing and I'll probably do uh, at least two coats just to make sure we've got a nice solid coverage of that before we move on now the plan for this shield is to have a green background or field with a yellow chevron sort of halfway down kind of kind of middle-ish maybe a little bit lower and so i'm going to start with the with the chevron and so i'm going to use um quite a dark yellow like an okra so this is uh, citadel sandry dust and um, it's quite thin down now it's about 50 50 water and paint and i'm using quite a, a small brush with a nice tip on it and I'm just going to mark this out just to uh, give me a good idea of where I'm starting um, just mark out where you want the the uh, chevron to be and take your time with it the um, the one that I'm doing here is a little bit offset because of the way I'm holding the um, shield so you can see it on camera with the camera being to my right so I, I needed to go in and, and sort of correct that and adjust it a little bit but that's, that's absolutely fine because at any point in this stage we can use the um, the black, uh, sorry, the brown. We can go back in with to correct the the lines if we need to. Um, we can go over again with the with the yellow as well, just to make sure that we're happy with the, the placement of the line. So take your time with it and make sure um, make sure that it looks okay when you're looking at it straight on. And when I'm happy with the overall shape of the chevron and it, it looks pretty well lined up, I'll start going over again with the the same colour as before. So we're just going to reinforce that yellow and um, I'm keeping it to the, the same kind of technique as what we used in the previous video so we're using thin paint and multiple layers and um, doing little sort of dots and dashes and scratches little marks like that so we're getting a, a sort of natural texture building up um, and this is not a texture created from the, the paint itself drying but texture that we get through multiple layers of thin paint giving the impression of texture so it's a, a painted texture rather than a, a solid texture if that makes sense and um, so we'll just keep going with this and I'll do a couple of passes with the um, sandry dust and um, just to make sure I'm happy with the overall shape and the, the layout that we've got there with the uh, base yellow so now we're punching up the saturation on the yellow so I've jumped up to a color called demonic yellow from army painter and I've created a little mix so I've got some of the sandry dust some of the demonic yellow and um, using the same painting techniques as before, the, the stippling, the dots, the scratches, we're building up again with nice thin paint. And um, I'll focus a little bit of the brighter yellow on the, um, the top end of the, of the chevron, and then more of the, um, the mix with a bit more Zandri dust to the bottom. But it's only a, a very rough blend that we're creating. Um, doesn't need to be uh, too fantastic because we're, we're creating that lovely texture as we go along. So now we're moving on to the green part, the field of the shield. And um, so the colour I've got here is Intermediate Green from Vallejo. Um, and I'm mixing that in with some of the black brown from the, the base that we did of the, the shield itself. And again, nice and thin. And I'm going to start laying the colour down. And I want it to be quite irregular. Um, so I'm using exactly the same technique as we've used all along and um, being very scrappy with this as you can see so I'm leaving some gaps and everything so this is going to help give the appearance of, of um, you know scratches and dents and things in the, the fabric on top of the shield and so I'm going to go over this a couple of times with, with, with this paint nice and thin and just allow that natural kind of build up of the, the appearance of this texture um, as I said before this is this is a painted texture not a physical texture we don't want texture coming from the, the paint drying solid in, in streaks or marks uh, this is more from the, the pattern that the paint creates as it dries 
Then as we continue to pass around the shield, I'm going to gradually introduce more of that intermediate green and then I'm going to focus that lighter green in sort of smaller and smaller areas, little patches and particularly up at the top and on the edges of the part where the, the shields where the damage um, is. So we're going to catch those edges there and really kind of focus the highlights there. So that's the, the bit that stands out with the brightest point of green and a little bit of the tip underneath the um, the chevron as well it's that small diamond pattern there so we'll work on boosting the green there um, and it's just a case of adding a little bit of green at a time to the mix uh, continuing to thin it down as well so it doesn't get too thick because again we want to avoid that texture and um, we can also incorporate a little bit of our zandri dust as well which is going to allow us to just um, push the green a little bit further but without without making it too much of a, a bright green we want it to be quite desaturated uh, sticking with this grim dark idea so just boosting the colour and continuing to, to sort of dapple and, and stipple around to get that texture okay time for a bit of shading so i'm going to go back to one of my favorite colors this is wood grain from uh, vallejo model color and uh, i've started off by mixing just a little bit of the zandri dust into it so we've got a, a slightly more intermediate color because the, the wood grain itself is quite a uh, quite a strong color and i'm going to use that to cut in the um those lines of damage, the scratches down the shield, and the edges around the side to darken them, and the bottom of the, the yellow chevron that we've got going on there. Um, oh, if you can hear a noise in the background, a strange grunting, then that's uh, that's my dog. She's asleep next to me, snoring away, living her best life. I uh, don't know if the microphone's picking that up, but I can hear it quite loudly at the moment. Um, but yeah, so we're going to go in and start the shading process so you can see that it's starting to, to build up a, a nice little shade. So once I've done it with the, the intermediate mix, I'm going to go in with the some of the colour on its own, neat as it were. And we're just going to start putting the shade onto the bottom of the chevron there. And as I go along, you'll you'll see the, the brush keeps disappearing. And so that's the, I don't advise this, but uh, I just kind of flick my brush just to... Uh, introduce a bit of moisture to it and then I'm, I'm then using the brush to sort of feather that brown out just to create a bit more of a blend um, and just to, to sort of help build that shadow but then make it sort of nicely blend up into the yellow at the top. And once I'm more or less happy with the with the shading that we've got on I'm going to go back to our demonic yellow and zandri dust mixture and I'm going to punch in the yellow right at the top of the chevron just to make that really stand out. So again, I'm just going to go in some little dots and dashes. It's still nice and thin and um, catch any edges on scratches that I need to and just um, carefully highlight that just so that really pops out. Right, onto the rim of the shield. And so I'm starting out with a royal model colour again. This is called Dark Sea Green. Um, strange name for it because it actually seems to come across like it's more of a, a blue tint to it. And you can probably see it on the palette there. I would really describe this as a kind of a dark grey with a little bit of blue in. So if you don't have this colour, you could easily mix it up um, just by doing exactly that, taking a dark grey and putting a very small dab of blue in it. Um, so anyway, I'm just going to go all around the rim of the shield with this. Um, still quite thin as well because we don't want to, to um, obscure any details using any thick paint. And uh, I'll go around here once or twice just to make sure I've got a nice even coat all the way along before moving on to the next step. Okay, so base colour done. I'm going to take some of this dark sea green and I'm going to mix in a uh, very light bone colour. Um, I think this was um, Citadel Screaming Skull, so anything um, anything in that kind of ballpark will be fine here. And I'm just first mixing up a, a slightly lighter grey, and we're just going to start um, working on what will be the, the highlight placements here. So you can see I'm kind of painting the, uh, the top edges and corners, they'll all get painted, and then for the, the rim of the shield further down where you've got these um, rivets, I'm going to paint a little bit 
in between the, the rivets on the uh, surface of the, of the trim of the shield and also catch all the edges as well so we're, we're thinking about any areas that are going to catch light if it was shining down from on top of it and um, same for the, the edge of the top of the shield here just picking those points out um, and this is just a case of moving around the shield picking those areas working on them um, I'll do a, a little dot of a highlight on each of the individual rivets as well um, and then we'll, we'll just boost the colour by um, making a little mix or changing the, the mix so we're going to have a bit more of the um, bone colour into it um, just to boost that and then continue to, to move around the model gradually increasing these highlights um, the, the trick here when we're painting something to look metallic the higher the contrast between the dark and light areas the more shiny it's going to look um, so as I increase the um, brightness of the highlight colours I'm going to put them in sort of smaller and smaller areas use, use smaller and smaller touches to put the paint on and try to make sure that you keep catching all the edges of the, the rim of the shield any little bits of, of damage any scratches on it make sure they get a highlight and by keep going around with the, the same paint we're reinforcing that highlight and increasing the opacity so it will give us a stronger highlight without necessarily having to jump up to a lighter color straight away so we can save the lighter colors uh, for later for the extreme highlights and for those extreme highlights this is where we're going to introduce some white and we don't want to overdo this because the more the more white we add the more it will, it will wash it out so the um, the white is going to be only at the, the most um, significant points at which the, the light is going to hit and reflect so still try and make sure you can catch as many of those sharper edges as possible to really distinguish them um, and then for the the rest of your extreme highlights it's going to be more the things like the tops of the rivets, um, sharp angles, corners, uh, lines of the sort of damage in the side of the shield, things like that, but just be, be careful not to overdo this point. Now on to the freehand design. Um, this is just going to be a very simple flower, kind of like a, a daisy or something. And so I'm going to take the uh, bone colour that I had on the palette, uh, thin down quite a lot and I'm going to start by tracing out a line of what's basically going to look like a, an asterisk so I'll start with a cross and then add a, a couple more lines in and this is going to form the, the sort of the basis of the outline of what our petals are going to be and I'm just going to take my time with that and make sure I'm, I'm roughly happy with how it is we don't want to ruin all the work we've put into this shield um, right at the end by doing a botch job of this so once I'm happy with the initial outline uh, I will simply use a slightly uh, slightly thicker colour and I'll add a little bit of the white to it as well. Um, I don't want to use a pure white at this point because it will look too, too bright and too clean um, compared to the rest of the shield. We want to keep it nice and grim dark uh, but I'll just use a, a little bit of the lighter colour just to um, sort of round out the shapes of these lines a little bit so they give a better imp impression of being petals and um, also just to give a, a little bit of a highlight so a little bit of a brighter colour on the, the top edges of the petals um, at the top of the design and um, then once I'm happy with that we will dot the centre and I'll use the um, what was the colour now? <laughs> Zandri dust that was it so the um, a little blob of the Zandri dust will go in the centre of the flower and then I'll also give it just a, a little bit of a, of a touch of the demonic yellow as well just for a bit of height and there we have it the finished product uh, another nice little shield um, hope you've enjoyed this video and that's everything for now so thanks very much and bye